Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to be doing a full face of new makeup. I have a ton of new products to play with. A couple of these products I've used once or twice, maybe on camera or not, and I'm gonna try them in different ways or different shades than I've used before. And then a lot of these products I haven't even swatched or touched. I have Hourglass, Morphe, One Size, Lawless, Huda Beauty, just a ton of new products to play with. Of course, I will link everything I use today down below. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. And if you enjoy videos like this where I try a bunch of products, Products, please give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we jump into the makeup, I quickly wanted to thank Curology for sponsoring this portion of the video. I wanna tell you a little bit about them and why I believe in this company, why I've personally been subscribed to Curology since 2019. I have struggled with hormonal acne, you guys have seen my journey, and texture and pores, but as I've gotten older, really around when I turned 30, I noticed having a lot of acne on my jawline, which really was bringing me down, and that's what led me to trying Curology. This really keeps my skin calm and on track. It controls the breakouts that I was struggling with. It helps prevent breakouts, hormonal breakouts, clogging of pores. I do feel that it's helped with the evenness of my skin. I had really red inflamed skin and I do feel like my skin is a little bit more calm and even toned. Even though I do have redness, it's never going to go away. But I just feel like this takes the edge off and keeps my skin at bay. To start out, you go to the Curology website and you sign up and fill out a questionnaire. It's going to ask you what products you're currently using and what problems you want to address, whether that be redness, pores, texture, acne, and then you get to send photos. And that's really helpful, even though it can be a little embarrassing. And I will put a photo up myself of when I was really struggling, just very painful, under the skin acne that just kept popping up every day. I was waking up with multiple different under the skin cystic acne, and it was super painful. And it was also taking a toll on how I felt about myself. Once you submit all your information and photos, they set you up with a dermatology provider to create a treatment plan for you. My provider is Danielle, and she created this cream that has three different active ingredients in it. My custom formula contains azelaic acid, clindamycin, and zinc pyrithione. Not sure if I said that last one right, but this is personalized for me to target acne, clogged pores, and skin texture. So your prescription formula will come to you in this component, and you just pump out one pump, a pea-sized amount, and apply it to your entire face in a thin layer before bed, and then moisturize as usual. They also do have a moisturizer and a cleanser that you can get with your formula. It's really up to you, or you can just get your formula alone. I've gone through multiples of these cleansers and moisturizers. They're very light. They don't clog your pores. They give you hydration, and they cleanse your skin. So the treatment plan is very straightforward, very easy. Apply this at night, put on a moisturizer, and then use your SPF during the day. If at any time you feel like you need to adjust your formula or something isn't working out for you, you can reach out to your provider and they will adjust the formula accordingly. So I thought that was really great. I've actually had to do that only one time, and that was when I first started. I used it for a few months, and then I felt like something wasn't working for me, so we adjusted it, and it's worked ever since. So overall, I've been happy with my experience using Curology, and I will continue to use them. I love the ease of use. I love that it's very simple. Simple, and I feel like less is more for my skin personally, so this works great for me. I really sought them out at a time when I was struggling, and when I compare my skin now to those photos, it is much calmer, less acne, less red, just more even toned, and it feels better as well. So I highly recommend checking out Curology if you have something that you're struggling with with your skin and you just wanna get a regimen that works for you. Curology was nice enough to offer a free 30-day trial to you guys. You do pay shipping and handling, which is $4.95, and you get to try your first bottle for free. So I will leave a link down below to sign up. I highly recommend this. Like I said, it's something I've been using since 2019. So obviously I've been using it for over two years and I really believe in the product. So I will leave a link down below if you wanna check it out. And let's go ahead and get into this trying new makeup. So I've got you zoomed in. I wanna start out on an eye look. I recently did a Will I Buy It and I was wearing this palette. I just played around with it for the first time before filming. 
and you guys love the look. I actually loved it too. It performed beautifully. I just love the look I came up with. So I wanted to use this on camera, do something very similar for you guys. This is the Morphe and Ashley Strong collaboration. It's called the Affirmation Magic Artistry Palette. And what really drew me in was the color story. I just love the mix of the grungy tones with the cool tones. And I used a lot of the green shades and then I did put this one on the lid. Now here's the interesting thing. If you go and look this up on Ulta, the reviews are split. <laughs> there's four reviews that say this is the worst palette they've ever tried, and there's four reviews that said it's the best palette. I'm a little confused because I had no problems working with it. I had to build up the shimmer shade, so they're a little bit hard pressed. They're more like toppers. They're not pressed glitters, but they're more of that sort of really shiny, thin formula. They're not powdery, so I don't know if maybe somebody may swatch this and think like, oh, that's not really pigmented. I did have to build this shade up, but a lot of you were saying in my video it looked like I was wearing Pat McGrath, and I have to agree. I mean, the look that I came up with was beautiful, so today I wanna do something similar to that, maybe not exactly the same. To be honest, my eyes are a little sensitive from all the black liner I've been wearing in my waterline, so I kinda wanna give them a break. I quickly went ahead and swatched some of the shades. I can see here that the mattes swatch decent. The shimmers really don't swatch very well, and when I did my look off camera, I didn't even swatch them. I just went in and applied. I I really had to build up this shade that I put on my lid, but once I did, it was like really beautiful. It did remind me of Pat McGrath. So maybe people are swatching it in store and they're thinking this is like terrible quality, but the mattes blended beautifully for me. They were pigmented and the shimmers, again, a little bit hard pressed, more like toppers, but I could see if I saw these swatches, I might think like, eh, that doesn't look that great. But on the eye, it performed well. So I wanna try it again today and see if I have the same experience. So for my look today, I'm gonna start out with I Am Powerful. And this whole palette is about affirmations, positive affirmations. So everything is like, I am thankful, I am unique, I am happy, I am radiant, which I thought was really cute. I'm gonna go in with a tiny pencil brush and I did set my eye very lightly. When I used this palette before, I set my lid completely. So it really kind of is up to you. So I'm packing this on. The inner and outer corner. It's really interesting to me when I was reading the reviews on Ulta, because I hadn't heard anybody really talk about this, and I just got it in PR and was playing around with it and really enjoyed the look that I came up with. And I really liked the color story too. I was reading those reviews and it was like, people seem to really hate this palette or love it. So it's interesting to me how some of the people said it was like the worst palette they've ever swatched or ever tried. I had a much more of a struggle with that NARS palette, but interestingly enough, most people said they loved that. Now, I still had a couple people say they struggled with the greens too, so who knows really what's going on. I mean, everyone's different, but I didn't have any issues when I used this palette. I love the look that I created, and I just love the color story. Next, I'm gonna go into this more like muted khaki color, and I'm gonna be using a Refer 01. I want to tell you guys I'm an affiliate with Refer now. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to be an affiliate, and I was like, absolutely, I really love their brushes. So I will leave a link down below. I know they do like concept store where they do uh, lower prices, and they have really nice quality brushes, and they also have their holiday collection, which is on its way to me, so I will demo that and everything, but I just wanna let you guys know that I am an affiliate now if you ever did wanna shop Refer. But I'm gonna dip into this shade, and then tap off the excess, and I wanna go over these edges. Just sort of blend them out. So next I'm gonna grab a little bit of I Am Loved and I'm gonna use this just to buff out the edges. This is like a cool tone shade. So I'm gonna go right over the edges of this just to soften it. So I'm just using this to really blend this into the crease. Well, above, way above the crease, but. And then to deepen it even more, I'm gonna go in with I Am Confident. It's a really deep green shade. Just wanna press this low, make sure that I'm keeping 
all this depth for this halo. And then you can use whatever brush you have and just blend. Okay, I reset my camera, thought I was recording and I wasn't. I took that shade I Am Magical, which is a shimmery green shade, and I just applied it on each side of the halo to blend into the matte shade. I'll go ahead and show you on this eye. I don't know why my camera wasn't recording. I've been doing that a lot lately. It's like forgetting basic things. So I'm just using this dry. Just to blend into the matte shade. Definitely having fallout with this one, so. And now for the star of the show, the shade that I used last time that I really loved. This is the shade I Am Unique. You can see I've really kind of dug in there. You do have to really kind of build these up. And I used my finger, so I just rubbed in and I'm gonna start applying. So I used like a pressing motion and I just kept building this up. So there is like two light layers. I'm going in for layer number three. Again, this is dry. So you can see that it has this really beautiful sparkle. Now I'm doing layer number four. So I guess maybe the reviews that are negative are saying that they're not pigmented, but they really are kind of like toppers. So I guess you just have to build them up. They don't have full metallic pigment, but they have a really beautiful shine to them. And I would imagine if you use them wet or if you use a glitter glue or anything like that, they would pop even more. So now that I've got that applied, just going back in with that brush that had the shimmery green on it, and I'm just kind of blending these two shades together. And then I've got a little bit of that purple on this brush too, and I'm just, again, just sort of blending the edges so it's not a harsh line. So just to show you guys, I wet a brush with that purple shade I'm gonna pack this right in the center. To intensify it. So here it is wet versus dry. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. I honestly think just packing it on with your finger is good enough. You just have to basically treat it like a topper. And then I'm just gonna go back in with that matte green just to make sure I didn't lose any depth. And now I'm just really blending all of these edges together with a clean brush. Just to make sure that it's nice and seamless. I feel like my inner corner here always gives me trouble. Okay, and then I quickly added some of this I'm Talented and I just used a Refer 14, so a small brush very lightly and I just wanted to blend over the edges just to make it a little bit more seamless here. So I just took this all over the edges. Give a little bit of warmth to the look too. Even though it's really not a super warm tone, it's more of like a neutral beigey tone. So also in this Morphe collection, there is the Alignment Cake Liner Palette. Now I've played with this a couple times and I really like this. I love the tones in here. These are water activated. So if you try to swatch them, they're very dry, nothing comes off. You really have to put a wet brush, not just damp, wet brush in here. So I'm gonna attempt to use this black shade and do a winged liner like I did in my other look, just to demo this for you. And I'm gonna be using a Smith 202 Very Tiny Brush. So I have my brush wet and she said in her video because I watched a video you really want your brush saturated so you want to have like a cup of water you don't just want to set it with or spray it with a setting spray you really want to get your brush very wet and then connecting okay I got really thick there see this is why I'm more into a liner pen I guess we're doing a thick winged liner today.
Okay, so as you can see, I royally effed that up. This is why I like to do my eyes first. So I'm just going to go under this wing and fix it. This is how I fix when I mess up. And I'm just much more into a liner pen for this reason, just because I, I just feel like I have better control. Now I would use this palette for the fun colors, like the navy and the maroon in here. But for the black, just for ease of use, I prefer a brush tip. So I'm gonna go back in here and try to fix what I just did. I went ahead and threw some lashes on off camera. These are Beauty Creations Faux Mink Indiscreet, so I will link them down below. My liner got out of hand. I am not used to using a brush, so it got a little bit, actually a lot of bit thicker than I wanted to. The product actually performs great. It's just a matter of if you like to apply with a brush or if you're someone that likes to do a liner pen. So I'd probably use this more so for the fun shades like the maroon or the blue, but just keep that in mind that it works nicely. I just am more comfortable personally to get precision with a liner pen. So now I wanna start on the face. I bought this from Target the other day and I've really been enjoying it. This is the Naturium Niacinamide Gel Cream 5%. I went down a rabbit hole on TikTok for just different moisturizers. I feel like I haven't been moisturizing my skin enough because I'm always afraid of the possibility of it causing clogged pores or a breakout. And this was recommended by a couple people on TikTok. I really like the way it feels, so I'm just applying this. It's like getting stuck in my <laughs> nose ring. The texture of this is a gel, but it's quite hydrating. I've only been using it for a couple days, but I haven't tried it. Well, yeah, I did wear makeup the other day, so I guess we'll see how it does under a liquid. I haven't worn like a full liquid foundation. So for primer, I have this new Vive Skin Nova Instant Radiant Primer. I picked this up from Cult Beauty. I also ordered a couple new products from her, but I haven't used this yet. So let's kind of swatch it. Okay, it's really gold toned. I was thinking it would be similar to, I think I got too much, the Rare Beauty one that I really like, the illuminating. So I'm just gonna apply it. It has a gel texture. Feels more hydrating than the Rare Beauty. And the Rare Beauty one is more like a light pink. This one is more golden. So here is the Vive Primer. It looks nice and glowy. It's a little bit tacky, a little bit more hydrating than the Rare Beauty. The Rare Beauty kind of sets down. So we'll have to see how this sits under makeup. I am gonna take a little bit of my Tarte Poreless primer in my t-zone so for foundation I did try this out in a previous video but I had to add in another foundation because the shade was too light for me this is the lawless conceal the deal long wear full coverage foundation so this you actually have to shake up and I got sent a couple shades but they were all too light so they actually sent me a couple more shades I have Palo Santo and Tawny and it's interesting because when you look at it, it looks like it could be the right shade or a little too dark, but the other ones were way too light. So I'm gonna start out with Palo Santo and I'm gonna shake this up. And this is like a self-setting full coverage foundation. It has a soft matte finish. For me, I don't think it's full coverage off the bat. I think it's more medium, but I like the way that it looked on my skin. So I'm going to drop some out. This is what the component looks like. And this looks a little bit dark, but I feel like, well, that might work. So I'm gonna take their brush. They have this foundation brush, which I really like. Start applying this. So the last time I used this, I actually liked it, but it was just way too light. Like I couldn't make it work. So these definitely run light in my opinion. Like this shade, I think is described as like a medium tan. And I typically, I'm like a light medium medium. Let me zoom you in more. All right, so this shade's looking a little dark, so I am going to mix in Fawn, which was the shade that I had before. And just to like show you a comparison, this was the shade I had before, and then this is the shade I have now. So it's quite a big difference. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of that lighter shade because I feel like I'm looking a little orange. I actually really like this brush. It reminds me of 
the BK Beauty Smaller Foundation Brush. I think it's the 106 maybe. So this is what the Lawless Foundation looks like. You can definitely build it to a full coverage. I would say off the bat, it's about a medium. The only thing is I have a hard time finding my shade because I feel like Fawn is way too light, but this Palo Santo is a little bit dark for me, so I may have to mix them, which is not really conducive, you know, for consumers to buy multiples. They did also send me Tawny, but this one looks a little bit more olive toned. So I'll have to play around with it, but I feel like it's quite smoothing. It's one of those that if you don't set your foundation, you wouldn't have to set this. I like the way that it looks in terms of wear. I had a hard time kind of figuring that out just because when I did wear this before, I mixed in another foundation. So I'll have to update in my description box, but overall I like the way that it looks. It's very lightweight feeling. Now I wanna move on to concealer. I've not used anything from this brand, but I picked up the Rose Ink Concealer. I got this shade LX050. I really was gonna get a cream blush, but then I was like, I have so many cream blushes, so I wanted to start out with the concealer and see how I feel about it. So this concealer is a clean product. It says it's medium coverage and radiant finish. It's supposed to be the clean, dewy, hydrating concealer. So recently I've been loving the Anastasia Beverly Hills concealer. It's very hydrating, so I'm curious to see. This has a huge doe foot. I like the packaging. It's very much giving me Rare Beauty vibes. So hopefully this shade Oh yeah, I think this is a good shade. Okay, it's feeling very thick. Not in a bad way, just. So to blend this out, I'm gonna use my little ghost sponge that I've been enjoying. Now, from what I've seen about this, which hasn't really been much, I've seen that it has a lot of coverage, even though it says medium coverage. It's looking pretty good. I can't get over this ghost sponge. I love the tail to blend in my concealer. It just gets like right in there. So my first impression is it has pretty good coverage. I would say it is hydrating. I would say not as hydrating as the Anastasia Beverly Hills, maybe slightly less. I'm gonna apply a tad bit more on this side. I just feel like I need a little bit more coverage. So here's what it looks like built up. I just did that one side because I feel like I needed a little bit more, but overall I feel like it's nice. It's one of those things I'm gonna have to see how powder plays with it. I'm gonna go in with my Huda Beauty powder and then I wanna use her new glowish luminous powder on the perimeter of my face, but I wanna use this in the center. This is pound cake. I am like almost out of this. I already ordered another one. So I'm just gonna kind of press this on my T-zone. Skin's looking pretty smooth. Go ahead and do it on the other side. So now that I've set my T-zone, I wanna go in and set the perimeter of my face with this Glowish by Huda Beauty Luminous Press Powder. I did a first impressions on this and I used it as foundation, which is how she demoed it, but she also said you could use it to set your foundation. You could use it over concealer, over a skin tint, over a full coverage foundation. So I'm gonna try it out. It is very luminous. And so I don't like it in my T-zone, but it has a medium coverage. It's interesting. It also doesn't make me oily. So that's another thing that I kind of like about it. I've been using it just kind of on the perimeter of my face and then concealer in the center, but I wanna try it today as a setting. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Fair Light. I'm just taking a fluffy brush and I'm gonna use it really just on areas that I don't have a bunch of texture. Although I do feel like, I feel like you can already see that. I'm actually gonna go in with light, which is a little bit deeper, and kind of dust around here. So can you see the glow? It's one of those products that I probably would use more so like I said, how I've been using it for every day, just because I like the coverage of it and I feel like it's really easy just to take a sponge and swipe it on. I don't know if I like this much glow with full glam. I'm okay with it in my forehead area, but yeah, I like to be matte in the center. So this is more of a more natural product. This is like when I'm not doing a full glam and I just want a little bit of coverage, a little bit of luminosity, but I just wouldn't really put this in my T-zone. So I'll keep playing around with it, but it's just one of those new products that I feel like you can use it in so many different ways. 
So next I wanna work on finishing off the eyes. I'm gonna go in, I think to this shade down here, which is called I Am Talented. That's the shade that I used to blend the edges. I'm gonna use that same brush and just really lightly buff this on the lower lash line. My neighbor's dogs are going crazy. She has three little doggies. Next I'm gonna take a tiny brush. This is a Zoeva 240, and I'm gonna go into the deepest green here, and I'm gonna do the halo on the bottom. Yeah, I'm gonna get some fallout here, so. But I'm putting this super close up. I kind of like don't wanna do my whole lower lash line dark. Maybe I'll try, well, I feel like I kinda have to. Sometimes I just really don't like how it looks on me to have like the really dark lower lash line. And here I am, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna give my eye a break, and here I am not giving my eye a break. Next, I'm gonna grab into this shade, and I'm gonna use the same brush that I used on the top lash line, and I'm going to just sort of blend this. I might not go as heavy on the lower lash line as I did before. It's really weird, as I get older, I feel like I look better with more minimal eye makeup. Jumping back into that really pretty purple shade, I'm gonna put this on the center of the lower lash line. So I'm just gonna kinda work this right in the center here. I don't think I did this last time, actually. I didn't, I put it on the inner corner, so I guess I am changing it a little bit. So for liner, I'm gonna be using the Nabla, which is the best. Ugh, I get it on my contact every time. I wish they had a smaller, oh my god, I got it on my contact twice. <laughs> oh, good job, Babs. This is like the blackest, most blendable liner, but I really wish they had a smaller size because I always hit it onto my contact every single time. I literally did it on both eyes. Like, what is wrong with me? So after I apply that, I'm just taking the deepest green in the palette mixed with the black on a really tiny brush, and I'm just gonna blend right next to where the lash line is to hopefully cover up my blonde lash line. Okay, one more time, I'm gonna go into this light shade and I am going to use the rougher brush, which is a 14, and I'm just gonna blend underneath just to really tie everything in. And then I've also gone back into the purple and I'm gonna apply this to the inner corner pretty heavily. I'm really just kind of pulling this around, making it more dramatic. All right, so I think my eyes are done. I wanna finish off the face and lips. So I'm gonna be going in with the new Hourglass palette. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit Universe Unlocked. I picked this up. I wasn't planning to pick this up, but really the blushes got me. And I have to say, I love the packaging on this. It is a tin, I guess, component, but it's much heavier and I like that it's not gonna get dirty with fingerprints. Inside, you get five different powders and really what got me was the blushes. So today I'm gonna use this for my bronzer, my blush, and my highlighter. And then I have a setting spray and some lip products to play around with. I'm gonna start out with the bronzer, which is called Radiant Bronze Light. I'm hoping that it will work for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a Refer 24 and dip in, start bronzing the face. I like more of a targeted bronzer because I kind of like it to give my face a little bit of shape. So this looks like it has a glow to it. I mean, it, it is called the Radiant, so why am I surprised? I actually like how dense this brush is. It's not too dense, but I can really get where I need it. I'm gonna start applying on the cheeks. Okay, so I like the tone of this. It's very warm. The only thing I don't know if I like is how radiant that is. I feel like it is a little bit texture enhancing when my skin was looking quite smooth. I'm gonna go into my Nude Gasm palette from Charlotte Tilbury. I just wanna grab a little bit of the contour shades just to kind of chisel back here. So I wanna go in with highlighter next. This looks absolutely gorgeous. I hope it's not too dark for me. This is one of their strobe powders in Solar Strobe Light. I'm just gonna use a brush from the Morphe and Ariel collaboration. Hopefully it's not too deep for me. That is blinding. Woo! 
I actually like that. It's a little texture enhancing. I feel like Hourglass products, people say they're not, but I think, again, anything radiant is texture enhancing, but I like the formula in that it's not dusty. It's very little uh, powder kick up in the pan. I really don't like products that are super powdery, so it looks really pretty. Very warm toned. I think this palette was geared towards like medium tan skin tones but the blushes just really got me. So now I wanna try one of the blushes. I am gonna start out with the lighter pink shade. I'm gonna use a Refer 19, this is new to me. Most of these Refer brushes, face brushes are new to me because I just got a package a couple weeks ago. This is really glowy. Might be a little glowy for my taste, again, with full glam, but for every day. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the pink on this other side too. This one doesn't seem overly pigmented, but I know the deeper one will probably pack more of a punch. So this is what we're looking like with the lighter blush. So now I'm gonna jump back in to this deeper shade. I'm just gonna take, yeah, that's pigmented. I'm gonna keep this further back and then sort of blend forward. This brush is nice too. Okay, so that amped it up a little bit. If you have a, you know, medium, light, medium skin tone like me, just build up. You don't need to go in heavy handed because that shade specifically, the like purpley shade is intense. So everything blended beautifully on that. I'm just noticing some texture just like on my cheek area. I typically have texture more so right here. I feel like whatever foundation and you know combo I used really smoothed everything out, but this is texture enhancing for me personally. This is something that I really don't mind most days when I'm just kind of hanging around or doing natural makeup, but when I do full glam, I tend to like more of a smooth airbrush base. Okay, so now I wanna move on to lips. I feel like I'm looking really warm toned orange. I think it's just the foundation was a little dark. So I wanna use this Cash Beauty lip liner. I purchased this, I think from Cult Beauty, I wanna say, or Beauty Bay, I think it was Cult Beauty. And this is in the shade Rust. This is owned by a influencer and I like the tones of it. So I'm gonna, I hope that will match. I'm gonna use a really light lipstick from Makeup by Mario to match. So I just wanna try this formula out and I'm gonna line my lips. So I really like the way this feels. It's not creamy, not overly creamy. So my first impression on this is really good. I like that it's not overly creamy. I like the shade, it's not too deep. And it was nice and pigmented, but it was really easy to use. So now I wanna go in and use one of these lipsticks. So Makeup by Mario just released a ton of lipsticks and he sent them to me. So I'm gonna grab out a couple and swatch them for you and then we will apply one and see how they apply. So I went ahead and grabbed four out to swatch. This is what the packaging looks like and these are called the Ultra Suede Lipsticks. These are a hydrating, long-wearing matte lipstick that has a weight weightless feel and a suede-like finish. So we have Brielle, Sierra, Erin, and Rasa right here, just different variations of nude. I think I am gonna go in with Sierra just because I tend to like a peachy lip with cooler toned eyes. And this is what it looks like. It does have that sort of suede-like look to it, almost like the uh, Power Bullets from Huda Beauty. It looks a little bit matte in the bullet. Feels very thin. I could see what he's talking about in terms of weightless. It's not really drying either, but it's very lightweight. So I'm not sure I'm loving that color with this makeup look. I'm gonna go in with the shade Rasa, which is a pink. Just right in the center. So the lipstick feels nice and comfortable. It's very thin, it doesn't feel drying, it definitely is matte. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my Nabla Nude 4 lip liner. For some reason, I just have to have a deeper lip liner. I don't know what it is. So we have one more product to test out. This is the One Size Until Dawn Mattifying Waterproof Setting Spray. I bought the mini size. So this is supposed to help tighten your pores 
and make your makeup waterproof for 16 hours and absorb oil for a blurred matte finish. Now I saw a review of this and it did blur her skin and I was shocked and she had oily skin, but I will say I've heard that the scent is insane. I sprayed it the other day and it, it was it's like on par with the Huda Beauty one, which I'm like, Patrick, why? You know, so let's see what the sprayer's like. So it's like an aerosol spray. I am going to just hold my breath and go for it. <coughs> okay, so the scent is heavy. Whew. Woo, I don't love the scent on that. It doesn't even feel like a spray. It feels like an actual powder. And when I spray it on my hand, it, it is a spray, like it's wet. Maybe I didn't get it close enough, but maybe I didn't hold it down enough. Ooh, that scent. It's like men's cologne. I really wish that would have been omitted, but it really feels like you're honestly spraying hairspray on yourself. I mean, this bitch is flammable, so. But does it blur the pores? Does it keep me matte? That's something that I'm interested in knowing, so I'll let you guys know, you know, in the description box if I notice that over time, but this would probably be something that I would use only for special occasions if it really does work, just because probably not good for your skin every single day. All right, guys, so here's my finished makeup look using all new products, and I wanna go over my thoughts. I did add a little bit of this gloss from KKW, so I will leave it down below. Starting out with the Morphe Ashley Strong Palette. I feel like it blended nicely. I feel like they don't swatch the best, but on the eye, I didn't have any issues blending. You can let me know what you saw down below. As I said before, the shimmers are more like toppers, so they're not gonna be full metallic pigment, so maybe that's why people are swatching them and thinking that they're bad quality, but I feel like the effect they give is really beautiful on the eye. So I guess it's just one of those things that maybe go in store and check it out. I love the color story and the packaging. And for me, I didn't have a problem, you know, creating these looks, but the reviews have got me a little confused on this one. Now, in terms of the cake liner palette, I love the packaging, love the colors, love the price point. You really have to make sure that your brush is wet and not just damp, but they are pretty easy to use. I am more so comfortable with a liner pen. So if I am doing a black liner like I did today, I would just reach for my Huda Beauty pen just because I feel that I have more control. But if you're used to using a brush and you wanna change it up with colors, this may be a great option. Maybe I just need to find a more precise brush to use it with, but I'm excited to try this for the navy and the maroon shade. In terms of the Vive Skin Nova Radiance Primer, I don't know if this is gonna become a favorite. I feel like my foundation does look nice, but I didn't put this in my T-zone. I'll have to compare this to the Rare Beauty. I am almost out of the mini Rare Beauty, and I was considering buying another one during the VIB sale. So I'll try this out, but it is a little bit more on the gold side and a little bit more hydrating than the Rare Beauty. The Rare Beauty is more pinky champagne and it sort of sets down. It doesn't really add any hydration. Whereas this one added a little bit of hydration to the skin. It didn't feel heavy, but it definitely did give me a little bit of a moisturized feel. Still enjoying the Lawless Conceal the Deal foundation. I feel like I'm gonna have to play around and find the right shade for me. I like how smoothing this is. It's one of those that doesn't look very textured even before I set it, which is kind of rare. This and the NARS Soft Matte probably look the best before I set it. So if you're someone that doesn't want to set, you don't have to with this one. It does have like a matte feel to it. It almost just feels like it kind of turns into a soft powder, not quite, but kind of. So it's very lightweight. I feel like the coverage is more on the medium side rather than full, but you can build it up to full. And I like how lightweight it feels and also just how smooth it looks. So I have to keep playing around with which shade works for me and then see how long this last and give you guys an update. My first impression of the Rose Ink Concealer is quite good. I felt that it was a medium coverage, creamy and hydrating, not quite as hydrating as the Anastasia Beverly Hills, but so far so good. A little went a long way. It blended out effortlessly and I feel like my under eyes look nice and smooth, so I'm excited to keep playing with this. I'm gonna keep playing around with the Huda Beauty Glowish Luminous Pressed Powder. I prefer to use this more so on days when I'm not wearing a lot of makeup, just to give me the coverage, a little bit of glow, and even my skin tone out. I don't think that I would use this as much as a setting powder just because when I do a full glam like this, I really 
want my skin to be matte. So for me, this is more of something that is an everyday essential where I can apply it everywhere but my T-zone just to even my skin tone out. So I would typically just go in with concealer, set my T-zone with a normal matte powder, and then just use this on my forehead, tops of my cheekbones, maybe even my jawline. So I'll keep playing around with it, but I'm just not someone that usually likes to add radiance to my full glam looks. Now in terms of the Hourglass palette, I love this packaging. It feels a little bit more weighted and I feel like it's not gonna get all those fingerprints on it. I thought it was a little bit glowier than I thought. I typically don't go crazy over Hourglass and I think that is the reason. Anything that is very radiant, glowy, luminous is going to enhance my texture. Now for an everyday look, very much like this glowish powder, I would use this more so. So not so much for full glam because again, I feel like when I put on a full coverage foundation, I really don't want anything that's going to enhance my texture and naturally anything that's radiant is going to enhance your texture. So this would be more of like a summer bronze light makeup look uh, kind of palette for me personally. I think the colors are beautiful. Everything blended beautifully and I'm glad that this highlight is not too deep for me. It really doesn't go with this look either. This look is very kind of cool toned. This is a very warm radiant palette. So overall I'm excited to give it a try. I think maybe I could be just thinking different things because I do have such a cool toned full glam look on but I'll keep trying this out and maybe use it in more videos to come to give you my full thoughts. In terms of the lip liner from Cash Beauty, I really like it so far. I like the color. It wasn't too slippery but it also didn't drag too much. So we'll see how it holds on. I did have to add a deeper lip liner for today, but I'll keep playing around with that. And the Makeup by Mario lipsticks, still too early to tell. They are very lightweight and they have that powdery feel to them. And they're not drying on the lips at all, but they do give you that kind of powder matte feel. But I do agree with the very lightweight feel. They're not drying. They don't feel like they're tugging. They didn't enhance any of my lip lines. So for me, this is something that I'm gonna have to keep trying and figure out what colors work for me. And then lastly, the one size setting spray. So I like the packaging. I like that I can get a mini size, which is what I did. I don't like the scent. It is strong. It is like men's cologne. It's very much like the Huda Beauty one, which you think he would have like saw that feedback and not gone that way. I really wish that it just would have been unscented or very lightly scented. It almost feels like nothing when you spray it onto your face, almost like it's not getting damp or wet, but I don't know if it's because it's that mattifying formula. So I'll have to try this out with a bunch of different foundations and powders. Keep you guys updated on how my makeup wears, but the scent is a little much for me, so this would really have to do a lot for me to want to reach for it. All right, guys, so I think that is everything for this trying new makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know you wanted to see a tutorial using that palette, so hopefully it gave you some insight on how it performs. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did you think that the products performed beautifully? Was there anything that you're interested in picking up or some stuff that you thought looked really bad? I always love to hear your feedback down below. Of course, I will link everything that I used today down below in my description box. Also, don't forget to check out Curology. I highly recommend it if you have some skin concerns that you're battling with and you want to find a solution. So I'll have all those links down below. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.